Here we are yes, Camping World Stadium here in Orlando. Uh, there's a bowl game, Cure Bowl. Smaller bowl, smaller team, Citrus Bowl. Citrus Bowl is played here. They'll be working that in a couple weeks, God willing. Uh, first time it's been worked by anybody that's served with us here. And so we're thankful to be here again and uh, plow this thing for a thorough gospel invasion today. Hallelujah. Yes, the only cure we got to be concerned about today, this is a cure bowl. We're going to talk about the cure for sin. Yeah, the cure for sin. That's, that's the right. cure that's, that's a focal right. point in the message today. That's right. And that's the central focus of the gospel message for the believer in Christ to be cured. Hallelujah. To be healed of this fatal disease, moral disease of sin. To have the heart of stone taken out of the flesh and the heart of flesh put in. May you be cured from your corruption through faith alone in Jesus Christ, Praise the God. eternal Son of God, the only one who could save. There's a way that seems right to many, but the end there are the ways of death. Yeah. And make sure, it, 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 you made sure that your sins are cured, that, you, that God has given you a new heart, that you've come to Christ for the washing of regeneration, the renewing, the renewing of the Holy Ghost, that God has washed you from all your filthiness and all your idols. Has that happened to you, right? A miracle of salvation, God making you alive in the Spirit, so we're born dead in sins, the trespasses. We commit crimes against the Holy God. Those are, those are sins on our account, legally uh, to be judged for by God. And so you need to be cured of that continual nature and, and condition. And only Jesus can do that. God commands you to repent and come to Christ today. I tell you, to know him is eternal life. Many here today are not living for God. They're not saved. They're still living in sin and unrighteousness. And God is commanding all people everywhere to repent. To turn in their evil ways today, to humble themselves. Pride comes before destruction. God hates pride and arrogance in the evil way. Oh, hallelujah. So right through it, just resounding through that whole area there. Oh, praise God. You can pray those musical instruments for the glory of God, guys. That's the important thing that we do, use our gifts that God has given us to praise his holy name. So bless God, it's a gift that I personally don't have, but I do rejoice when I hear others that have it. But if we're just playing for mascots and idols, like voodoo, word, all those other things, it's vanity. So may I encourage you, band members, young people, are you in Christ? Are you, is your soul saved? Have you been born again? The scriptures concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ may be given to all who believe. You need to be saved. You need to be saved from God himself as a judge of all the earth who will destroy his enemies. And he sent his only son to do that and procured eternal redemption for all who would believe upon him. The question for you is, have you come to a saving belief? Or are you just a professor of God with your mouth, your heart far from God? You're doing religious works, thinking that you're okay because you're comfortable and somebody declared you saved at some point because you've gone to some religious assembly or gathering and you feel like you're right. Well, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. We're unclean, but in Christ, only in Jesus Christ can you be made clean, washed in the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust to bring us to God. He sat down at the right hand of God. He rules the universe, and he's coming again to destroy the ungodly and the nations of the world and rule in his millennial kingdom and forevermore. He's on the throne now, governing all the affairs of men, sovereign, powerful over all the events that happen upon the earth, put, raising up nations and pulling them down, setting up kings and pulling them down. All the nations are a drop in the bucket to God. So we know that all things that work together after the counsel of his own will, it will bring all things to pass according to his eternal purposes and decrees. Praise his holy name. Give glory to God today, folks. Repent. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ before you perish. Are you in Christ? Oh, praise God, young lady. Yes, we got to look into the, the grafted word able to save our souls, a perfect law of liberty. If I were you today, I'd go look into 1 John in the back of the Bible before the book of Revelation. 1 John is five chapters, very self-examining, wonderful thing to see. Uh, if you're a child of God or a child of the devil, oh, hallelujah. Many people in front, they think they're okay with God, not realize that they're actually under the wrath of God, that they are alienated from God. Yeah, Enemies in their minds by wicked works, right? There's many that think that they're okay. And that's a great deception. So it's a delusion that even God sends. He says he'll send in the last days for those who have pleasure in wickedness and believe not the truth. But 
making sure you're not in an illusion today which would be examining yourself are you abiding in the word of god if you say you believe in jesus christ he says if you are my if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed you shall know the truth the truth shall make you free he who the son makes free is free indeed and he sets the captives free from the power of sin and satan and they can walk in the spirit of a life of glory and virtue on the earth for god and not for men to praise god now where are you at with the god in the bible you might have been raised in church and see people singing hymns and songs and dancing and all that kind of stuff. But there was no, it was a form of godliness denying the power thereof. There's no power in your life over the habitual sin that you loved. And you're still falling into sexual immorality and drug use and drunkenness and uh, idol worship, whether it be a person, place, or thing, or a TV program, filthy music. You might have these things continually going on in your life. But friend, let me remind you again. That's a work of the flesh. If you practice those things, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And in this, the children of God, the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. So how do we find out what those are? What the righteousness of God is in his word. Uh, sola scriptura means the word of God alone. It's scripture. All scripture has been given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction. The training in righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped, complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the scriptures, right? Uh, we, all we need is the scriptures to show us our hearts, to examine our lives, to whether we are truly serving the one true God. Scripture alone. So look into the perfect law of liberty today. Are you right? Would you, are you, are you, good to see you. Make sure you're spending to read that in your break, okay? Jesus said you must be born again. That's what they've been born again is when you're born of the nature of God. And God does not contradict himself, right? So if you're born of the nature of God, you should bring the fruit of the Holy Spirit, who is God. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, uh, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Against us, there's no law. So we have those fruits in our lives, spiritual fruit, that's going to reflect that God dwells in you. In this tabernacle you live in, this tent, this body, is a dwelling place of God the Spirit. Not... A habitation of devils like it used to be. They let the spirits of the power of the air run you. So many people in the world are so deceived. They still think they're fine that God loves them in some superficial way, of some tolerant way of filthiness. And God hates all workers of iniquity, the Bible says. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. The Lord hates wickedness. He loves righteousness. Anything not in conformity to his holy nature, he abhors. And God has every a righteous, holy hatred, unlike you and I, that are in our ways were perverse, or tainted with sin. So look into the Word again today. Make sure you truly are right with God and not really serving the devil. Praise His holy name. Turn to the Savior today. Turn to the Savior today. Repent your course. So it's time is running out. Every day you live on this earth, you're getting closer to the day you meet your Creator and give an account to Him. Give an account to an eternal God who doesn't know sin, who hates sin, who's angry every day with sin. He's angry with the wicked every day, the scripture says. The question is, are you living a life for him? Are you living a holy life? The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Taking part with this world, the Bible says you can't serve God and man. You can't serve God and money. You can't serve the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If any man loves the world, today is of Nahum. I will lift your skirts over your face and show the nations your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. I will cast abominable filth upon you and make you vile. I'll make you a spectacle, a gazing stock. That's what's happening. is cast abominable filth upon this country. So much perversion of the six scandals. All over the news, all oh, this wickedness increasing throughout the land. As it was in the days of Noah, we're headed there. The domino effect, a sp downward spiral. Wickedness and idolatry. We see throughout this land. And that nation is not obeyed. He said, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation. Even Russia has more morals than the USA. They forbid sodomite marriage. They forbid that the flagrant sodomite homosexual agenda in Russia, other nations, why are we so perverse? 
Why have we gone a whoring from under our God? You need to repent. Be reconciled to a holy God. Oh yes, the so-called Bible Belt isn't a belt at all. We're going to put on the belt of truth. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you walking with the belt of truth on? Because we see the Bible Belt, and what they say is becoming more ecumenical than ever before. Yoking with the, the whore of Rome. And false Christ and false gospels, hirelings and the puppets, Mason pastors, all kinds of wicked things happening in the so-called Bible Belt. Is that, they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. They must not be studying to show themselves approved unto God. What Bible are they reading? Do we see no virtue or holiness in this land? It's like it is here and everywhere else. Again, down from Georgia. And worshiping this idol and getting drunk before the games, Saturdays and Sundays, like everywhere else in the nation. It's happening. You don't know the Lord. How many of you are truly saved today? How many of you have truly come to Christ? And you forsake these little things and you're more concerned about the kingdom of God, the advancement of the kingdom of God, setting your minds on things above, not on things of the earth. Have you died? Is your life hid with Christ in God? According to Colossians chapter 3, are you still alive? Trying to live here and serve yourselves. Oh, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. And he gives the grace to do all his will. With a just weight, a balance, is his light. So folks, we plead with you today, examine yourself. Are you right with God? Are you serving the God of the Bible? What's the evidence? Not with that beer in your hand, getting drunk and lingering around. It's filthiness. You don't need that garbage. You don't want that when you got the Holy Spirit. You don't need to be sitting getting drunk on 10 beers and before you go to football. That's because you don't know the Lord. You'd be more excited about doing what we're doing. Serving God because God's Spirit compels us to exalt Christ, not bring reproach on His name. No, you're not, young man. He's not mocked either. Blasphemy. It's an abominable sin. Turn your evil ways, young man. Cast down this idol and return to the living God. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Don't harden your faces. Humble yourselves. Turn your evil ways. Yeah, that way seems like right to you, but the end of the other ways, what team are you from? I wonder. Helicopters. I don't know what that is. Would you like to take a selfie? No. Okay. What you need to do is turn your evil ways and your abominable Jezebel whorish ways and come to Christ before you perish. Yes. It's true, you got a wicked spirit, you guys are, it's an evil heart of unbelief. We're not here to judge, we're here, we're here to tell you how to be saved from judgment. Who gives you the right to judge? Well, Jesus said, to, Jesus says judge with righteous judgment, we're not here to condemn you. He says, Jesus says, judge with righteous judgment. Or I told you to tell me your ways. Oh, you're in order. Personally, male or female, with God, with idols. That's an abomination. You're terrible, dude. That's the truth. You're terrible. Go read the Bible again. How many times did God use that language in the book of Ezekiel? Jeremiah, it's called spiritual whoredom. If we're not here with God, our hearts are turned to idols. And God commands you to repent so you can be saved and get right with God. Come to Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except me. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's going to be a lot worse if you end up in hell. Yeah, that's where you're going to be. Well, no, I deserve to be there, but I want you to be saved so you can know God. This guy's well, why won't you come to Christ and serve God? Why haven't you come to Christ and serve the living God? Your day is ruined because you still want to hold on your sin, but he says that Jesus said if I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. The world hates me because I testify it that its works are evil. No, we need, he says, Jesus said, if everyone, everyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. For he believes in me, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Come to Christ and drink. He's a fountain of living waters. You don't need that drink. That drink is so damning. Come to the one who gives you life. We don't want you to be judged by God for your sin. You need to be saved from sin. Repent and believe the gospel today. Jesus is your only hope. Be reckoned out of God. At that time, we'll say, depart me, I never knew you, ye workers of iniquity. It's a very serious, very sobering passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. We know that many have gone to church or some religious assembly in their lives. We know that many here today believe they believe in God. And so the mercy of God and the grace of God, if you poured out here today, would call you to examine your self-examination to see where you're really at. We've had you know, an idol of, of football all season on Saturdays and Sundays, which is what we live for. 
Here in America, we have forsaken the God of Scripture. We're not passionate about God. We're passionate about animals and mascots over God. That seems to be the common epidemic of the land. And as we continue in those ways, we heap up greater condemnation. All this idolatry, God is sending strong delusion upon us before the second coming of Christ. Before the second coming of Christ, we're going to see an increase of violence, a great deception. The days of Noah were in that manner. The days of Lot, uh, the people were eating and drinking. It didn't seem like a reality. It didn't seem like it was going to come as destruction from the Almighty. They didn't believe. They hardened their hearts. They mocked, they blasphemed. They laughed Noah to scorn. Lot went out without a warning. And this nation has, a, has a much warning to return to the Lord their God. Personally, you may have had many warnings in your life, your conscience pricking you, convicting you of sin. That the gospel is the answer, the gospel of your salvation, where the Holy God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and on account of sin, condemned sin in the flesh, to fulfill his righteous requirements of his holy laws. The legal demands of God are to be satisfied. The wrath of God are to be pacified. And it was all done in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was crucified on the cross. An eternal God bore in a few hours what one is going to bear for an eternity in hell if they die in their sins. And so your call today is to repent and believe in the gospel. Have you surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? He is your King. He is your God. There is no other God besides Him. For of Him and to Him and through Him are all things to whom belong the glory forever and ever. It is in him that there is life. This life is the light of men. It is in him that there is eternal redemption from the curse of sin and the law. He became a curse for all who believe upon him on the cross. He bore the curses of disobedience in his own body. He bore sin itself of all of his people in his own body on the cross. That we would die to sin and live for righteousness. There's nothing else you can do to add to this work. There's nothing you have in and of yourselves to make yourself worthy of God. And it's in Christ and Him alone. Sola Christus. To Christ alone. He did it all. He paid it all. If you're in Him, you're counted righteous before God. And the evidence that you are in Christ, that you truly believe, is you're going to be sanctified by God, not conforming to the things of the world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. To love God, to obey His commands, to walk in His statutes and precepts by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that people aren't going to be your friend there. They're not going to like you there. They're going to hate that love and that virtue in your life. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that will cleanse the conscience from dead works to serve the living and true God. Folks, the Lord is known by the judgment that He executes. The second coming of Jesus Christ is a day of devastation. A day of destruction from the Almighty. It's a day of devastation. So we see now we're headed towards the return of God, the return of Christ. And the scripture declares that is a horrifying day. It's going to be great judgments upon the earth beyond description and beyond comprehension. And men in Revelation 16 still don't repent after great plagues of hail and uh, stings of, of devils. You can read the accounts. They're going to harden their hearts like never before. God says it. He's ordained it. But there's an elect that's going to be saved in that time. Are you saved today? Have you been born of the Spirit of God? Oh, hallelujah. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they say, come on and read. you got time to read it now. But many people are going to go to church tomorrow that aren't really saved. That's the thing. Go to church every Sunday and end up in hell. How's your relationship with the Lord Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, glory to God, guys. This is good. Can I get a let's go stage? I'll take that. Let's go stage. We can go. Let's, it was an, the only going we got to do is going to Jesus. Now, you're going to join. If you're born again, there's no, you're not like condemned for going to a sporting event. But a lot of people make this their God. That's one major epidemic in this country. We know that. So there's Christian people that go to sporting events. We're not religious people. We're not saved by religious works. But is this becoming your God? And you, you can look and you know, if you're getting out every Saturday and going to tailgates three hours before the game or five hours and getting drunk and, uh, you know, all listen to filthy music and then you go to church on Sunday, you can be rest assured you're not a Christian. Don't, 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 don't deceive yourselves. I mean, you're not saved doing that kind of filth. You can't be spending all your energy and, and money and time on worldly events and be saved. But we're not here to tell you you can't do certain things. There's liberty in Christ, but, you know, you seek the Lord in those things. Romans 14 makes that clear. The one 
It seems one day above another, another seems every day alike. Let each one be convinced in his own mind, but the scripture gives a guideline there. It makes decisions based on the word and help us, oh God. We are wicked frail. Are you born again? As sure as you are today that you have a ticket to get in this, in this football game, are you that sure about the salvation of your soul? If you had died right now, where would you go? Are you 100% sure? When you sit there and think about that, because you're going to give an account to God. You may never hear this again or see anybody like this again in any events again, but one day you're going to die and you'll be with God. You're going to give an account of what you heard today. And God's not mocked. God knows every secret of your heart. You don't want to be judged by God. You wish you were never born. You'll be eternally destroyed. That's why you need Jesus. Jesus was destroyed on the cross by his Father to save wicked sinners like you and I. Evil people like you and me that deserve hell. You're not good. There's nothing. Don't think you're good. Don't think you're okay. That's when you come to the cross. You can't change yourself. You can't be a better person. You must be born again. Find out what the new birth is all about. Spend your life looking into those doctrines. That'll be freedom. That'll be peace. That'll be joy. When you come to that saving knowledge, if you haven't already, God commands you to do it. You're going to know God in his ways. The cross is where we find all peace with God, the love of God, because God's love demands justice for sin against him. And he will not violate that. And we see the love of God demonstrated through the cross of his son when the Lord Jesus Christ bore that holy hatred and wrath for all who believe upon him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to come to Christ. If your parents want to go to hell, let them go. You come to Jesus. If your mom and dad want to go to hell, let them go to hell. Your kids want you to Jesus and let the little children come to me. For of such is the kingdom of God. If your parents don't want Christ, they don't want heaven, let you go without them. You're not going to be there to plead your case before God when you die. No one's going to tell God what a great son or daughter or grandparent or mom and dad you were. It'll be your own account to God, your own sin. Don't let anybody else deter you from the God of the Bible. Come to your king. Repent towards God. you got to get right now. Don't listen to these fraudulent pastors that are spiritual prostitutes on Sundays lying to you about God. Like T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen and all those false spiritual whores. And that's all they are. And they're going to burn in a devil's hell. All those Nigerian pastors, that spirit in Nigeria about money. T.B. Jeshua and all those false prophets. Those guys are from Satan. And they hate God and God hates them. They're liars. They're sexually immoral. They pervert the gospel for money. They're not of God. Has anybody told you that before? Or they want to tell you what you want to hear? You like those TV preachers? They're from hell! And they're not preaching the biblical Christ. They're not telling you about repentance and the life and the virtue, the merits of Christ, and he finished the work alone, and he doesn't need any of your money. He makes you a new creature that wants to give and do things because God has changed the nature to give you new desires in accordance with his word. You're playing with fire, folks. Cast down. You're going to look into the word. Oh, friend, be not deceived in this wicked and adulterous generation. The day of the Lord is coming. It's burning like an oven when all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. The day that he is coming will burn them.